Good evening and welcome to our third Aquarius. It's on reggae music, British reggae. We didn't go to Jamaica and we didn't film Bob Marley, who for many epitomizes reggae music. We went to the Jamaican community here, to Brixton and to Stoke Newington, and to the black clubs where reggae is made and played. Our director, Jeremy Marr, has been working on this film for many months, but it begins at the recent Notting Hill Carnival, where, as everyone's only too aware, the tensions in our society exploded in a rather ugly way. But one of the ways to heal ourselves, to recognize that we're now a multiracial society, is to understand each other through our arts. In the past, Britain has absorbed many other cultures, Norman, Huguenot, Jewish, for instance. Now we're trying to absorb the gifts that minorities, like the West Indians, have to offer today. To reject them now only impoverishes ourselves. It frustrates those who want to give those who perhaps feel the barriers against giving. Reggae symbolizes all this. For years, it's been branded as trouble music. There's not been much of it in the media. But as our film shows, reggae is already adapting itself to its British way of life. All it asks, like the people who make it, is the chance to be heard, understood, and enjoyed. The narrator in this film is our advisor on the program, himself a West Indian, Carl Gale. <laughs> It is carnival time each year that brings our West Indian community with its exuberance and its pressures onto the streets of London's Notting Hill. Reggae is the music of all young West Indians, but it was brought to Britain by Jamaica. Born in Jamaica, reggae now has an international multiracial following, but it still speaks directly to the roots audience who are the music's lifeblood. Well, brothers and sisters, as you know, your musical priests have been standing at this musical microphone, delivering my musical message to you right now. 
as you have got for me. Roy Shirley, who runs a small record store in Stoke Newington, is one of Jamaica's most original reggae artists. I came to England to give my music to all people of all races. Jonah came in the belly of the whale, but I came in an airplane. So I must be the new Jonah. Music means more to me than just money. My music has a spiritual message, and I was born with the power to give it to the world. I, I must say something, Joe. Um, I can remember when I start, uh, when I come with the knowledge, you know, my mother explained to me, she said, uh, the first time, you know, when she take me from the hospital and she bring me home, and I started to cry, you know, a lot of people always come around and enjoy that crying, you know. So you can you, you just imagine, really. It's, I think it's a gift. It's a born gift. <laughs> The religious fervor of Roy Shirley's music is based partly in his childhood experience of hearing Salvation Army bands playing in the streets of Kingston, Jamaica. He listened to their beat and made something of his own. Shirley describes reggae as music that makes you want to stand up and dance. It's a mixture of rhythm, blues, and spiritual sunshine. Reggae has mostly depended on mobile sound systems to take it round the country to people. These traveling discotheques were the first means of getting the music to the grassroots. Massive amounts of amplification and labor are still needed to bring the latest sounds to the people. Sir Coxon is one of the best known traveling disc jockeys. Well, I play more Jamaican music than anyone else in England today, without any doubt. I play the most reggae music in England today. My ambition personally, as a man who defends in Jamaica music since 1962 in England, is to play in the Halbert Hall and Covent Garden and places like these. I want to play my sound there to, give, to show these people good Jamaica music because 
the thing what I find with Jamaican musicians, Jamaican musicians can play soul as good as the Americans. Jamaican musicians can play pop as good as the Englishman. But neither the Englishman nor the American can play the reggae as good as the Jamaican in Jamaica. Well, a sound system is a mobile discotheque in the English sense of it. You understand? We call it a sound system. The English people call it a, a discotheque. Only that we get on our microphone and put a bit of life into the music. You understand? saying you're playing too much reggae you're playing too much reggae and they fight me down wherever i play there's always the police because it's a reggae dance the police come and break down the house and mash up the thing what i think happened to the reggae in england again the people who is making the money out of the reggae is not putting enough money back into the reggae to, to promote it. The people who is releasing Jamaica music in England, they, they're just capitalizing on it. They just release what they feel will sell. Now, we are the people who go to the ghetto and carry the music to the people in the ghetto. We are also ghetto people. anywhere else in Britain. Brixton is the home of the Jamaican community. Jamaican music has been on sale here since the early 60s. The first person to start a record store and fight for the music was Joe Mansano. We started selling uh, cosmetics and wigs and so on. Briefly, we did not want it to go into uh, West Indian music anyway. We had to find an alternative because we couldn't live on selling cosmetics and wigs only. So what we did was we got together and we said, look, we're going to start selling West Indian records. Even then, reggae was not recognized as a proper ethnic music as now. Oh, what a rat race! It is a rat race. There is, it is a rat race among all the races. One is always trying to outdo another. If you, if you look at boxers, from time they enter the ring, the idea is that um, I'm a black man, I will support the black boxer. A white man will support the white boxer. You may not know one iota whether or not they are either good or bad, but because the fact is that he's a white and I'm a black, I will support the black. The Europeans have their own culture and the West Indians have their own culture as well. And we are only more or less um, trying to find out our real culture, but basically, we are from Africa. 
Other record retailers struggled to set up their own cottage industry, like Larry Lawrence. It is a hard business. You're traveling here. You gotta travel. I've traveled out a year, Canada, right round Venezuela, right round, looking for deals, right, making um deals and getting new records and new ideas. And it's really a hard life, you know. But you know, as they say, it's only the fittest of the fittest shall survive, really. What's the reward then? Well, the reward I would like to have a big car, <laughs> right, a beautiful lady, <laughs> and relax. You know what I mean? We have days to come. You know what I mean? The number one spot on the reggae charts is often occupied by these smaller record companies. Matumbi is a band that recently got to number one with After Tonight. Many of the reggae records produced in this country come out of a tiny recording studio in the backwaters of Chalk Farm. Reggae artists feel at home here. Nicky Thomas is a frequent visitor. Jamaica music. My music is for nurses. I says the black nurses, the bus conductors. Um, they, after a hard week, they need some sort of entertainment. We who are young must take they just want something to enjoy themselves. And that's what I'm about. When I was a little boy, they told us that um, our music was local music. And I come to this country to make it international because every music can be international. Reggae is technical like every other music. It's not everybody can jump up and play it. You gotta know what you're doing. I do music for white, black, brown, green, and pink. Because everybody loves music. Even birds sometimes play music. Reggae in this country, as you call it, has been used like a whore, if you know what I mean. Now the pants send the whore out in the street. They don't look after the whores. They just send them out and they get the money and bring it back. Nobody don't put anything into it. Well, not even a good whore, because, for instance, if I had a whore working for me, I'd make sure she looked good, so she could demand more money. I'm not too fussy about the money, but I come from Jamaica to let our little highland music expand. I'm going to sing you what Jamaica music is all about. Maybe my singing is not good enough. But the rhythm track, if you listen to the rhythm track, you heard what it's all about. Love is not just a dream that builds on the illusions. It's more than something to feel. You can taste it and touch it, it's real. 
Love is what two people make it And nothing outside there can break it If they understand They can command Love to be Where it cannot be free Love is not just one night Of moment and fire That feel down desire It can't be bound by a chain You keep sharing your love for a fame Love is a season forever When two people planned it together No. 